Hey there guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be going over visibility graphics and the grid layer manager. One of the questions that I'll often get is how do I set up my layers? And one of the benefits of Revit is that they're already set up. Anytime you start a project, it creates those layers automatically. We have our walls, doors, windows, all of them separately categorized. So let's go to the view tab and we'll click Visibility Graphics. So this is basically our option menu for graphical overrides. Note that these are just your options for your given view. If you make a change in one view, it won't necessarily carry over into another view. So we have our model categories, our annotation categories, our analytical model categories, our imported categories, and our filters. So under model categories, uh, Notice that our doors and windows have a particular look. If we scroll down and uncheck the Windows button, we hit Apply, and now you'll notice that our windows have kind of disappeared. If you recheck the button and hit Apply, then you can see the windows will reappear. The same thing holds true for any of these elements under Model Categories. But notice that these are part of a model. So that can include your doors, your windows, furniture, ductwork, any number of things. Your physical elements. Now annotation categories is going to be your detail lines, your room tags, uh, really any other tags that you might create, like for furniture or doors, even dimensions. So let's go ahead here and try to find it. Okay, if we uncheck Dimensions and hit Apply, you'll notice that on the floor plan view, all of our dimensions disappear. So we'll add them back, but notice that you don't have to create any of these categories. Revit has them automatically built in the instant you open it. So this is really useful for you guys. Think of those experiences in AutoCAD, where you're going and you're trying to click into some hatching, hoping that your computer doesn't freeze up because you have to get into the exact right spot. In Revit, because, because for instance, the windows are already designated as windows, we can go under these graphics options and under Cut, let's say we want to add some texture or graphical design to it. We'll go to Patterns and override the default. We'll make the windows red, and the pattern will be Solid Fill. And you hit Apply and OK. Now, if it doesn't show up, that doesn't mean that you did something wrong. That just may mean that it's a different category. It may not be cut, it may be projection. So, to give you a demonstration, let's go ahead and do the exact same thing, but under the Walls category instead of Windows. So, we'll go into Pattern, and we'll make it red, and we will give it a solid fill, hit Apply, and there you go. All my walls are cut, and they are all filled in with the color we chose. Consider how simple that was compared to, say, AutoCAD, where you'd have to worry about hatching and potentially crashing. All we did was go into View and select Visibility Graphics. The keyboard shortcut for this, by the way, is VG. So it's incredibly fast and easy to make these changes. Now one thing I want you to notice is that there is a cut and a projection surface. Now the difference between this is, for instance, in this particular floor plan, I am actually cutting through all of my model about four feet off the floor. Projection, on the other hand, means that you're looking down upon it. A classic example of this is furniture. So let's go into Architecture and Component, and we'll add a desk to the living space. So we added the desk, super easy. Now, if we go back into our Visibility Graphics settings, we can change how that desk looks in the model. So, note that when we click on Furniture, we can go ahead and change the projection or surface, but we can't do anything about Cut. If a box is grayed in, that means that it can't be altered. So, let's go ahead and add a transparency to this object, and hit Apply, and now we'll add a pattern to it. So we'll go ahead and add a gray pattern of diagonal up lines. So hit Apply and OK, and now you can see that our desk has a different appearance from the rest of the room. 
note that these visibility graphics options are only for floor plan level 1. If we go ahead and click on level 2 in the project browser, none of our effects carried over. Now it's possible if we use a different template to have those effects carry over across different levels, but that's something we're going to cover in a later course. So just remember that your visibility graphics for right now are only going to apply to a given floor level. So under these visibility graphics, whether we're dealing with projections or cut patterns or transparency, we can always go in and we can clear those patterns. Just go in and click Clear Overrides and it'll reset it to the default. So I'll go ahead and do the same thing with Windows and hit Apply and you'll see that everything has gone back to the way it was when we started. So because these levels are automatically set up when you go into Revit, it makes it very easy to adjust your visibility graphics to whatever your personal needs are or the needs of your firm. If, if your firm likes things a certain way or if you just prefer to work a certain way, you have flexibility to go in and do that by floor level. You can even go through and adjust the line weights uh, from levels 1 to 16. So we're not going to go over every single option in the visibility graphics menu. Uh, we're going to save that for the intermediate Revit course. But just for an example, let's set the wall to weight 9 and change it to the color red. Hit apply and OK. And now you can see that the lines are much thicker and they are now this red color. If we go in and change it to 1 and hit apply and OK, you can see now that the lines are red but very, very skinny. So just to recap, visibility graphics controls a huge amount of what you see. Line weights, line styles, fills, and really just what you want to set up. Alright, we'll see you in the next video.